than my infirmities. Okay, you got Matthew 8 and 17. All right, somebody read that. Thank you, baby. So now, here's what he said. Okay, now, so you got your Bible, so check this out. So look at the B part. Saying himself, who is himself? Jesus. He took our infirmities. Okay, come on now. Jesus took all of my sicknesses and diseases. So if he took it, who got it? If he took it, then who got it? Then why we walk around saying, I'm sick? Why we walk around saying, my arthritis? <laughs> my diabetes? My stroke? My heart disease? Have you not even noticed that on the TV commercial when they're talking about sickness that 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 the actors on there they actually say they actually claim it they, and they'll say well you know that the doctor said that 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 my heart disease could be this. and I'm like Lord they they saying they speaking and so if Jesus then already took my infirmities then what's going on? Then I need to walk around and say, no, that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. Amen. That there are, that God don't have any, disease. oh, and this is another one that I hear people say, well, you know, God put this disease on me because he's trying to get my attention. God can get my attention a whole lot of ways. Then it made me sick. I don't like being sick. I don't know about y'all. I don't like taking medicine. I, I, I don't, mm -mm, nope. I prefer to be healthy. He gives us divine health. Amen? Amen. So, with that being said, he took your infirmities. You don't have them. They don't belong to you. So when the devil starts trying to make you sick, you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm already healed. Yes, symptoms may come up, but you bind the symptoms. Don't say, I'm, you, now, y'all know this is flu season. Right. And I get the flu around this time every year. Oh. I believe I'm, I think I'm catching a cold. I think I'm coming down with something. Yeah. Help us out. Come on. Go back to Psalm 103. Benefits. Benefits. So. He forgives all of my sins. He heals me. Where we at? Verse 4. Oh, look at this here. This is a benefit. Who redeemeth my life from destruction. Yeah, he saved me from the pit of hell. He saved me from hell. Do you not know that when he redeemed us, that word redeemed means that you've been bought with a price. And the price that you was bought with was the blood of Jesus. So because I was bought with the price, I was at the old folks said, I was on my way to hell. But Jesus saved me. Now, for those of you who may be saying, uh, hell ain't real. No, hell is real. And no hell ain't what you going through up here. I mean, I know you may be thinking that you're having some hard times and you know, and that you don't know how you're gonna make it, but baby, let me tell you, this is not hell. No, I mean, you know, hey, hell is hell. <laughs> hell is hot. Y'all think we get hot here in the summertime? No, mm -mm. hell is hot. Hell, hell is a place that God made for Satan and his demons. It was not made for us. And so people say, but why is God sending folk to hell? He ain't sending nobody to hell. Hell is a decision and a choice that you make 
when you decide not to do what God has said to do, which is to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that he died for your sins. That's the one thing that can get you in hell is when you don't believe what God has done. So he saved me from the pit of hell. And, and let me tell you, this, 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 this thing about being redeemed. Let's go to 1 Corinthians and let's read this. I want you to see this. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 19th verse. And, said, and I think as Christians, I think sometimes we forget some things, especially this. That when our life was redeemed, how many of y'all know that a change was supposed to take place? That means that I should not be acting or doing some of the same things that I was doing before I got saved. So if I'm doing some of the same things that I was doing before while I'm saved, then that means some things need to take place. That means that I need to start renewing my mind in the word of God. Or maybe I did not really receive Jesus Christ as I said that I had. Because how I many you know there are a lot of people that go to church every Sunday and they think they're born again because they're in church every Sunday, but they have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Why? Because we can look at the fruit that the tree is bearing. Amen? Okay, so are you over there on 1 Corinthians 6 19? Because I'm not. All right, who got it? And I want you to read it. Thank you, baby. You read that thing. You are so good. So 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says what? It says this. Thank you. He said what? I mean, as if you're surprised. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Where is he? In you. So why would I take Holy Spirit and go lay up with somebody? Where my wife? Come on. All right. I mean, I've been redeemed, right? Why would I take the temple of Holy Spirit and you fill in the blood? Then I know that the, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in me, which you have of God. Are you not your own? What? So that means I don't belong to myself no more. That means that I just can't do anything I want to do when I feel like doing it. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Okay. I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. You weren't just bought, but you was bought with a price. God thought enough of us to give his son for us. You are worthy. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not worthy. You are worthy. God thought enough of your worthiness to give his uh, to, to, to give his son for you. That's, that's pretty worthy. So you are bought with the price. So therefore, glorify God in your what? Body. So glorify God in your what? Body. And in your spirit, which belongs to who? God. So I ain't my own. Because I've been bought with the price. Mm. Ain't got to go no further on that than that. I think it spoke for us there. Let's go back over to Psalms. Psalms 103. We're talking about God's benefit package. For he redeems my life from destruction, which means he saves me from hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Verse 4, continue. Then he says, who, come my God again, this is another benefit, crowneth me with love and kindness and tender mercies. He crowneth me. Now, when he talked about crowning, oh, no, wait a minute, y'all, wait a minute. Um, I, gotta, I gotta have y'all do this. You know, you've heard people say, uh, 
in the word, you know, back on redeemed. And we'll say, you know, in the church, church that we was coming up in, especially when the old mothers, mothers would get up, and she would say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> Fair Rose, but I couldn't leave that one out. <laughs> let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what? That I am the redeemed of the Lord. So I'm going to tell you, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And what you say is, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Are right, y'all ready? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. You've been bought with a price. You are no longer your own. You belong to God. Amen. 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 So that's why we, even as wives, you know, even the word of God tells tells us as wives that our husband that our bodies belong to our husbands. It is amazing how sometimes that, that may be about the only scripture that a man would know. <laughs> you know the Bible do say that your body belongs to me. You're like, well, brother belongs to God first. He said, put that one in there. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> and you know the other scripture that men know real well. You must submit to me. If they don't know nothing else, they know them two scriptures. Them two. <laughs> and they say you just haul out, I'm the redeemed. <laughs> Oh, okay, verse 4. <laughs> who redeemeth my life from destruction and who crowneth me with love and kindness. With love and kindness and tender mercies. And that word crown means, you know, I know that a lot of times that, that we could think about, um, and you know, that we don't have any kings and queens that reign here. But, you know, over in London, you know, they have the queen, you know, and they have the princess and they have the king. And there's a crown that they wear. And this crown is, I mean, have y'all ever seen, not in person, but have you ever seen the crown that the, king, that the queen wears? Yes. Man, that thing is bad. <laughs> I mean, it's full of diamonds and rubies and sapphires and, and all them wonderful gems that I would love to have plastered on my hand, <laughs> on my neck, get my head, put in my ear. <laughs> But so she, and so, and, so and, and what happens is that she's, when she's crowned, you know, this crown is placed on her head. And when the people see that crown, they bow before her, even without the crown. But really when they see that crown, because that crown signifies something. That crown signifies royalty. That crown signifies um, that she is of a different make, that she is, that she's what they consider to be a blue blood, you know, that, um, that she, that, that she demands respect. She don't have to say nothing. She can just walk in the room and everybody be like, oh, the queen is here. <laughs> <laughs> this crown that God is talking about here it means to surround us. See, the crown, when it's placed on the head, it surrounds the head. But with God, God says this crown actually surrounds our entire being. Mm -hmm. So that when he sees us, because he says that, he says that I surround you, in the word of God, when your benefits, that I have surrounded you with my love and kindness my mercy and my favor. And he says that another thing about the crown is that the crown is like a shield. So that no matter where you go, that people may not recognize it. But the devil in hell does. Because don't forget, he says over in First Peter that we are of a royal priesthood. Uh -huh. A peculiar people. 
So when people say something strange about you, like, oh yeah, that's all right, I'm just gonna kill you. <laughs> because I am a royal priesthood. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Come on. We're gonna continue on. Verse five. So he says that he crowneth me with his loving kindness and with tender mercies. Verse five. Who satisfieth my mouth with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eels. I don't know about y'all, but I confess that one now all the time. Hey, I'm going to brag now. I like going places with my son. <laughs> and they don't believe I'm his mama. <laughs> They get me just be pumping me up too, though. But I, but I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I choose to believe that. I like going out with pastors and they say, You brought your daughter with you? It's funny now that you got this little wife on my head. for my youth to be renewed like the eagles. To be renewed. So that means every day that I get up in the morning, I can look in the mirror and say, girl, your youth be renewed like the eagles. <laughs> but there are, some, there are certain things that you have to do for your youth to be renewed. I mean, uh, hey, it's one thing that I can just stand there and quote that word all day long, but then never do what I'm supposed to do in the natural. Because sometimes for your youth to be renewed, how many of you know that means you might need to change what you eat? That's why they call it beauty sleep. I didn't get my beauty nap in. I get mine in every Sunday afternoon around 1 to 3. I don't want the phone to ring. I don't want the doorbell. I don't want to hear nothing because I'm trying to get my Sunday afternoon nap. I call that my sand time. I wouldn't be bothered by that time. I'm going to get my beauty sleep in, my beauty rest. But really. But he said that my, that, that your you, I'm, I'm telling y'all, if y'all ain't taking advantage, that, don't get mad at me. What's that commercial say? Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. No, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I said y'all was going to have fun. <laughs> And she's so vain. No, I'm not. <laughs> Y'all remember that song that was out? You so vain. I bet you think this song is about you. <laughs> I ain't that vain. <laughs> but truly, but he says in his word that he will renew your youth. But when you start praying that, then be open to what he tells you Amen. to do Amen. so that your youth can be renewed. Amen. Amen. So, so, so he may tell you again, so he may tell you to change your diet. Mm -hmm. He may tell you exercise. Mm -hmm. I know you may not like exercise, but at least give him go walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's something we do every day anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, go walk. Get up and, get up and go do something, you know, for your body. If you want if you want your body to be good to you, right. you need to be good to it. Mm. Amen. Amen. That was free. It didn't cost you nothing. <laughs> so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I mean, I, I do have another scripture for that. Where is that scripture, Lord? Let's go on over to um, Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. We're going to get ready to wrap this up. I tell you, I enjoy, I, I, I love bringing God's word because I, when, that's the thing about here at, at Remnant, that our desire and our mandate from God is to help you reach your destiny on what God has called you to. And we were riding in the car yesterday, 
yesterday with, with my mom on my way to, I think it was on the way to the baby shower thing. And she asked me a question. She said, did you ever think that you would be living like this? And I looked and I said, yeah. So I did. Because I remember as a kid, I talked to God. I wouldn't say, but I talked to him. I knew, I knew it. As some of the folks, I knew there was a higher being. I knew that there was somebody else that was out there. No, I didn't know much about him, but I knew I knew he was up there. And I and I used to have conversations with him about stuff that I wanted. And I and I was real good about begging, asking God for stuff. And you know, you ever been riding in the car? You know, you know, like when you was kids and. And you, you know, and you be riding in the car. Uh, you, you know, you know, your parents is driving, and you in the back seat of the car, and you have that's my car. Bingo, my house. Yeah. Bingo. That's my house. Bingo. I'm gonna get that car. <laughs> I used to do that, and there was one car in particular that I always wanted. I remember mean, I was 12 years old, and I saw this older lady pull up in this car, and at that time it was a Mercedes. And that thing is just something about that thing. It just, I mean, I was like going almost goo goo. I was like, that's what I want. When I get old, that's what I'm going to get. Because I figured you had to be old in order to have it, you know. Because she was old. Okay, no. <laughs> and so, and, and I remember I used to tell God, you know, certain cars that I wanted. I would tell him certain houses I wanted to live in. And, and how I wanted to dress and, and how I wanted to be. I mean, I would look at TV shows and, and see the ladies on there and they'd be, I'm like, I want me to dress like that, you know. And so, did I know? Yeah, I did. Because he told me, you know. Is that bragging on me? Mm -mm. I'm bragging on him. And now that I'm older, I realize now it's my benefit. Hallelujah. And I'm going to take advantage of my benefit. And I recommend you do the same. But don't be acting funny. Don't be hating. Mm -hmm. When I come up in here, because I'm going to wear it. And I might even do a fashion show. Okay. I told you to go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 and 31. Matter of fact, now let's look at Isaiah 40 and 29. So he said that he gonna that he will renew our youth like an ease. Verse 29 of Isaiah 40. He says, and he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he will increase your strength. The word of God says, let those that are weak say, that's what I'm talking about. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord come on now. belongs to you. I don't remember, you know, uh, I'm gonna get y'all out here on time. I remember, uh, they and I here, so I'm gonna talk about my, my real son, little Victor, and then my son in the gospel, Kate. So I call their names out. What page is it? Okay. <laughs> One day, I guess they felt like because I'm older than them, that they wanted to go to the gym with me. I said, okay, come on. I said, I know they can hang with the kind of workout that I do. Don't get it twisted because I'm fit. So I said, yeah, come on. Meet me at the gym. 
gym at 5 o'clock. So here they come. Oh, yeah, I'm at the gym at 5 o'clock. So here they come, y'all. They, just, they was just cocky, just as cocky as they wanted to be. Yeah, we're going to see if mama, mama ain't doing nothing. She ain't doing nothing. I know we can do what she's doing. Honey, we got up in there. First of all, this particular building that we're in, that we have to run around this building, and she has a flight of stairs on the back. So we have to run around the building and run up both sides of the, of, of, of the steps and then go back around the building again. We do that six times. Oh. That's a woman. Oh. They started out good with me. Come on, mom. We, we can do this. Yeah, we got this. We got this. By the time we got to the second lap. Oh. Y'all do this all the time? Oh. I'm tired. I looked at them and said, no, we remnants. the building, <laughs> laid out on the floor, and looked up at me talking about, Mama, I feel nauseous. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, no. Nah. Y'all said y'all could keep up. <laughs> so even the young can get, up, can get tired <laughs> real quick. And so and then, then just to post fun, I called them the next day. I said, how y'all feeling? Caleb told me, I can't help you walk. <laughs> My legs are so sore. My son told me, I just decided, I'm just laying in the bed. I'm just not going to get up. But, but everything is just hurt. I said, but no. Nah. So needless to say, they ain't been to the gym with me no more. So they ain't coming back. Cause they, cause, cause you know they kept this word that they use. They say, "Cause mama them be beasting it." Like, yeah, you. <laughs> I don't quit, but gotta do that. And I just said that just to have fun, you know, because he will give you strength. Yes, yes, and a lot yes. of times when I do get tired, I am. I'm quoting. I can do all things through Christ with strength. I can do all things through Christ with strength. Yes. Yes. You ain't got to be running around no building. You can just be walking to your car. I can do all things. <laughs> through Christ, which strength is me. You be cleaning your house. I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. 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 One more scripture, y'all, and we're going to go. Okay. Did y'all enjoy that? Yes. All right. So we're talking about the benefits of God, how awesome they are, and they belong to us. And we got to take advantage of these benefits. So let's go to Isaiah, I mean not Isaiah, Psalms. Let's go to Psalms again. We'll go back to Psalms. Mm. And we're going to go to Psalms 116 this time. And we're going to close it out with this. Psalms 116. Now I can't even get my husband to work out with me because he said we're crazy. <laughs> Why you got to go so early? Why don't you just lay in the bed? No, I know me. At the end of the day, I don't want to do nothing. So as I have my time with the Lord, I head to the gym. Psalms. Okay. Psalms 116 in verse 20. It's again. So now this is God. You know, David is saying now to the Lord. You got 116 Psalms? Verse 20. And this is his question now. He said, so after all the benefits that he talked about with God, so now he's saying, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? He's asking a question. God, you've been so good to me. You've been so faithful to me, Lord. You healed my body when I was sick. You redeemed me from the pits of hell. You satisfied my mouth with good things. I'm going to go give me some scrimps. <laughs> you renewed my youth as an eagle. Now, Lord, how can I repay you? What can I give back to you for all these wonderful rewards and for all these actions, Lord God, that you've done for me? And it's like, 
is like when he asked that question, I, 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 and I'm quite sure he was probably thinking, Lord, there ain't no way in the world that I can pay you back for how good you are to me. But Lord, you know what? I sure wouldn't mind trying. Tell me what you want me to do, Lord. And so he just said this, and it was just so, so simple. He said, you want to pay me back? I said, mm-hmm, I do. Tell me what I need to do. He said, tell my people. Number one, don't forget what I've done for them. Hallelujah. Just don't forget. And then to even go a little bit further, come to church. Come to church. Well, that's the least that we can do is to go to church. I mean, we go to a job and we work 40 plus hours a week. We do it whether we're sick and tired or whatever. We're going to show up on that job. Because we want to make sure we get them benefits. But then for God, all he's asking for on a Sunday, two hours. And possibly even on a Wednesday night, two hours. That's four hours out of a 40 hour week. I would call that a tithe. Just a tenth of your time is all he's asking for. And plus, you know, the word of God do tell us don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because when we are assembled together, it brings forth a strength. It brings forth a unity. See, then we're able to stand with one another and we can have each other's backs when you're going through something or when I'm going through something. I just need somebody to just kind of help prop me up. You know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, read your word. You want to repay God's back? Just read his word. Read, read what he said. Learn about your See, the, those benefits that was listed there, that was just a few, y'all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't even touch on the part where he says that all your needs are met mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I didn't even touch on the money part. I think I will not. <laughs> but he will bless you with money. God ain't got no hang up with money. We do. Remember, he says that I own the cattle upon a thousand hills, and he don't eat steak. <laughs> His streets in heaven. Oh, no, they ain't paid, baby. They made. Big difference in paid and made. Yeah. Uh, that's that gold plated stuff that we be wearing. <laughs> Too much soap and water is gonna turn green on you. Uh -uh. I mean, uh, he got gates that's made of pearl, a whole pearl. He got walls made of diamonds and, and sapphires. Bling, 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 bling. So he ain't messed up by no money. No, and he don't want us to be. That's why he said that I will multiply to you. I will do exceeding abundantly above. All you can ask for thing. You want to repay him back? Do what he say. Just obey your <coughs> voice. And just do what he say. Amen. 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 Give God glory in the house. <laughs> Take advantage of your benefits. And see, because again, you know, I could go on and on. I mean, you know, we got angels. That's watching over us. I mean, so many things that God has. Amen? Amen. 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 So, with that being said, that concludes the end of my message. Did y'all enjoy that? Yeah. Amen. I enjoyed it. That was good. I had fun with it.